So we got a lot of information that just came down. Some of which is concrete, some of which is fact, and some of which are complete rumors. So let's get started, shall we? My name is Owen, and we're going to talk all things Halloween Horror Nights 26. And as for Hollywood's event, I'll be discussing that in another video, because Maze 2 has a code name, and that is Doris Day. We'll discuss that at a later time. So let's get started with the fact that for the last couple of weeks, I've been checking around the various UK ticket sites trying to find out any sort of information, because, by and large, they get their information first. When they get their information, usually a couple weeks thereafter, we get ours. And this was no different this year. So basically what happened was, I was looking around, and I found a listing for the Frequent Fear Pass. And it basically revealed some of the differences that were going to be from last year versus this year. The fact that we're going to be adding Sunday to opening weekend. And just like everyone knew we're going to end on a Monday, these dates that we had heard in that video that was released on November 2nd, right after the event last year, is actually coming to fruition. They did not change the dates like I thought they might. I thought they'd actually go with maybe switching it up a little bit and adding the first week of November, kind of coinciding with what Hollywood did last year with their farewell weekend. And it was very successful for them, but they didn't have as many dates as us, even with that weekend added. So it was completely understood that once everything was announced, uh, oh, I was going to start booking. And I haven't booked yet. That's because I'm kind of waiting on uh, cha-ching from uh, Uncle Sam. And once that happens, yeah, that's going down for real. But the thing about it is, is it gave us an idea of what we were to expect when the announcement was finally made. And that announcement finally came, and it came in the form of last week. Now, last week, it was officially announced via the HalloweenHorrorNights.com Orlando site. We have the dates. We have the official dates. And just like predicted, it's going to be September 16th through October 31st. That's right. It's going to be running for 31 event nights. And through conversation I had with my good friend Charles Bremer, it comes down to this. You've got 34 nights for characters this year. You have the event nights, you have employee preview night, and you have two nights for rehearsal. So if you are a character or want to be a character, then you better get your work boots on tonight because it's going to be insane this year. And it's going to be even bigger than before. So once those auditions come out, then I would get to them and make yourself a character, or try to make yourself a character. And I do know a few of our popcasters here on Pop are going to try to do just that. And if that information comes out, I'll release that information to you guys, as long as I'm allowed to. So, let's talk about the dates, shall we? Now, with this 31 dates being the longest run ever, and I did mention the fact that we are ending on a Monday, which is unheard of, we are also allowing for the fact that that Monday is a work day. And... Just like with the Frequent Fear Pass not being allowed to include the final night of the event for 24, I think that there's a possibility that the last night event traditions are probably going to be done by a lot of the locals on Devil's Night, October 30th this year, given the fact that Halloween is on a Monday. And to a lesser extent, possibly on the 29th, given the fact that maybe they have to go to work, most likely have to go to work on Monday morning anyway, and can't stay out super late on Sunday anyway. I'm going to guess we're going to stick with the 1 a.m. closures and even on peak nights, the 2 a.m. closures. Do I think we're going to be leading to 3 o'clock a.m. closures eventually? I think it's probably going to happen someday, but that would also allow the event to start a little bit later. And that's what I think may happen if they ever jump to 3 a.m. closures. I think we stick with 1 and 2 this year. And midnight closures, they're a thing of the past. The event's way too big, and they're a thing of the past. We're going to start with 1 a.m. closures, peak nights at 2 a.m. That's my prediction right now, and I think that's probably going to happen. Now that also says another thing that's kind of being pushed a little bit under the rug, and that's the fact that opening weekend is actually going to have three dates. It's not going to just have Friday and Saturday. It's going to include the Sunday as well. And that means if you go to the event and you're not an employee or friends with an employee that can get you in a preview night, you're going to be able to have three nights at the event, bam, right off the gate. So that's going to be a really big deal. And I think that's a really awesome thing they're doing, given the fact that there's a good possibility by the time... I check into Cabana Bay with Travis on the 19th of September. 
I will have going to Halloween Horror Nights four nights. So before I even move to Cabana Bay, I'm already doing four nights because I'm staying at Sapphire Falls because why not? It's the brand new resort and we'll talk about that a little bit later on in this video. Now, I will mention a couple of things and I'm going to start with the actual dates. We're going to start out on the 16th, 17th, and 18th. And we're going to move on to our next week, which is the 22nd through the 25th. We're also going to have event nights on September 29th and 30th. And we're going to move into the month of October with the 1st and the 2nd, the 6th through the 9th, the 12th through the 16th, 19th through the 23rd, which I will be there for the 23rd, and then the last hurrah, the 26th through Halloween. So it's a big deal. And there's other things that go to this as well. And that's not just the UK Frequent Fear Plus Frequent Fear tickets that have came out, which are basically stating that we are going to be paying like almost $120 for Frequent Fear, but we'll see what happens when we actually get that. That's just a way to look at, see if you're not from the United Kingdom, you are able to get an idea of what you're going to be budgeting for. And that's basically just turn pounds into dollars and bingo, bango, you got your money price. So your price point will be figured out just that quickly. But until everything's official, and I have a feeling we're a couple of weeks away from that actually happening, we need to just put that on the back burner. Another fact that the add-on tickets have changed this year, and last year there were a tier based upon the date that you went to the event. And the tier started out actually at $50, and it moved all the way up into the hundreds. So it just depends on the night you went to the event. Now, this year, it's $59. $59 a set ticket, whether you go Sunday, Monday, Sunday, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and there's nothing about Saturday. So it makes me believe that there's going to be another Saturday ticket. It's not going to be a Friday and Saturday ticket. It's going to be a Saturday ticket, and Saturday will be covered in a different way this year, and we're interested to see exactly where that's going to go. So another thing we want to mention is the fact that Due to the opening of the 5th Universal Orlando Resort Hotel, Sapphire Falls, which I talked about I'm going to be staying at for opening weekend, as I'm sure a lot of you out there are going to be doing the same, they issued a package, a ticket package, for Halloween Horror Nights 26. And it's a pretty sweet deal, actually. You get at least three nights at Sapphire Falls, which include a two-day park-to-park ticket, as well as that early park admission. And on top of that, the big deal would be this combination, that $59 ticket I talked about, Sunday through Thursday, Halloween Horror Nights ticket, that's included, and the one that everybody's really buzzing about is the fact that you're going to get a $150 dining credit for the new hotel. So yeah, you get all of that and more, and it is currently starting at $209 per night, and that's of course, like I said, per night, and that's just... A situation that has to be booked by March 31st, and it's for stays between Sunday and Thursday. Now, if you don't want to stay at Sapphire Falls, you're a little bit more budget conscious, you want to stay at Cabana Bay, you can have the same package, but obviously it does not include the same amenity of the $150 dining credit. You can get that starting at Cabana Bay for $185 per night. Royal Pacific, if you want to jump up to Express Access for $259 per night. And uh, the Hard Rock Hotel is starting out at $279 per night. And that's also with Express as well. And just a little bit more if you want to stay at the Portofino. Now, if you're really budget conscious, you want to get the most bang for your buck and you have the value issue that you want to and not necessarily stay on property, but you still want to be close to the action, there is a partner hotel right now starting for $145, and that's at the Best Western Orlando Gateway. So if you want to book any of these, you want to book any of this information, or you just want to book Universal in general, or you want to book anything in Central Florida, then uh, check out my good friends at Universal Fan Travel, which is a subsidiary of MEI and Mouse Fan Travel, and you can check out their website at universalfantravel.com. Now, I will state right now, I have no vested interest in... MEI, Mouse Fan Travel, or Universal Fan Travel, I basically just want to help out my friends. So they're, they're good people, they're good friends of mine, and they have done really well for me in my travels. So when it comes down to it, if you're looking for a travel agency to book your resort reservation, go through uh, MEI, Mouse Fan, and Universal Fan Travel. 
So another thing on this was the fact that the Unmasking the Horror Tour dates got announced. And of course it coincides with every night of the event. Now the thing about it is, is things are changing a little bit. It's an add-on for that vacation package they talked about. You also can buy it separately. Now the price point went up a little bit. Like we're talking like $20 more. So you're looking at right now, if you want to go at 10.30 a.m., it's the Morning Madness Tour. Uh, malice, not ma madness. Same thing. Um, and then there's the Afternoon Abomination. I can say Abomination, but I don't remember which one is morning. Anyway, uh, if you want to get that, you can see three houses, and uh, you also get that really sweet uh, Halloween Horror Nights lanyard, which may or not be the same lanyard you can purchase in the parks. Just depends. It's been different for different years. We'll see what happens for 26. Now, if you want to book one of those tours, Right now, the price point is seventy nine eighty seven, and that's tax included already. So you don't have to worry about any additional charge. You don't have to worry about handling or shipping or anything like that. It's just seventy nine eighty seven. Now, if you want to get both in, and you want to do the morning and afternoon tours. You can basically get that for a hundred and thirty eight dollars and forty four cents. That covers six mazes of the event. And like I said, the behind the scenes aspect, if you are a fan of this event, and I'm sure if you're watching this video, you are, then I would implore you to have at least one Unmasking the Horror Tour on your itinerary this year. Now, nothing about the RIP tours. I'm going to guess it's going to jump up to about $1,600 or uh, $1,599 for a non-private tour and maybe $160 for a, um, never first that, <laughs> 160 for a non-private tour and about $1,600 for a, uh, a private RIP tour. But we'll talk about that when we get more information on it. We don't have any information on that. We don't know about Russia Fear. So successful. I have a feeling if they can uh, make that work this year, I'm sure they will. And all the frequent Fear tickets when they announce that. If there's going to be a different ticket this year, we don't know about. If there's a ticket event or an event ticket, flip that backwards and basically can get you access to the entire event for one price point. I'd be down with that. God knows how much Express is going to cost this year. It almost had to be a necessity last year, and I think this year it will be a 100% necessity. So that's the information that we have that's concrete. Let's talk about the rumors right now. We're all about rumors here on the Popcast Network, and obviously take everything with a grain of salt. So we start out with Fowl Allerson, who we brought up on this channel before. Now, Fowl Allerson is connected to Attractions Magazine, and he does something called the Rumor Queue on their website. So he's had a presence in this event for the last couple of years. And he throws out a lot of interesting rumors, which sometimes come to fruition, sometimes don't. This is right now what they're hearing to be rumored, rumored for the event this year going to be in two parks. Once again, I don't think two parks are going to happen because I cannot see them closing Iowa at 5 p.m. for the general public, given the fact that some people come down, they don't know anything about Horror Nights, they just want to get in their parks, and they don't understand why their park is closing at 5 o'clock when there's an event going on until 1 a.m. on the other side of the park, and the other park on the other side of the uh, <clears throat> city walk. So I could see that being an issue, and especially with Hulk, it's refurb and the brand new Kong opening. I would see there being no way they could do that, even though they would still get that money back with people riding both attractions during Horror Nights. I don't think it's going to be a two-park event. I could be proven wrong, but for all the people that are saying that construction is going to be an issue, maybe we're getting another 2012, which I hope not, because... I think that they're going to rectify that problem. It's still going to be in the studios, and they're just going to change some locations. They're going to change some house locations and change some queue locations, both entrance and exit. So that's what I'm thinking. So that's what we've got for that. So let's, let's take that off. And for those of you that want a two-park event, like I said before, I have a feeling the walking, like most people would not be able to want to do it. And they would only spend one night in studios and the second night in islands. And plus it would do good for like two parks for uh, the event. Like you would basically sell a lot of tickets, like one day tickets. But still, I think a lot of the people going to the event are going to be taking advantage of the frequent fear options, regardless what they may be. So I think that that's a question for a different time. So I'm thinking that if they did do two parks, it would be like, okay, one day I'll stay in the studios, one day I'll stay in Iowa. And again, like I've said before, if Bill and Ted is going to be at Toon Lagoon, then I'm screwed. So <laughs> there's that. And it would take a lot of time to do everything. We'll see what happens. Seems like more of a 30 event. Two parks, 10 houses, makes sense. But we'll see what happens. So, 
Let's talk about lineups. Uh, the first thing that's on the table is American Horror Story. Now, obviously, there's been a lot of issues with Ryan Murphy and the very risque content of the property. And the question is, would it be an amalgamation of everything? Would it be a house that just is one of the five different, very different IPs? Like, could it be a murder house? Could it be Coven? Could it be Asylum? Could it be Freak Show? Could it be Hotel? Could there be five separate houses for American Horror Story? You get a full American Horror Story year. I don't think that happens. I don't think that's going to work at all. But I think it would be a, a compilation house if it happened at all. But then again, maybe you never know. It might be a little bit too risque. Maybe things are not going to work out. And we still won't see American Horror Story at the event. Here's Krampus. So, Michael Doherty did a very uh, a minorly successful film in 2015. And, obviously, his big claim to fame is Trick or Treat, which I know a lot of people want to see at the event, and I'll talk about that a little bit later as we progress. So, he did that movie, and obviously there was the Dark Christmas scare zone for the last two years in Hollywood, and thinking that it's going to end up a house this year. We'll talk about that in another time. But, I'm thinking that Krampus could be a possibility, but you never know. We'll see what happens. A maze based on the works of Alfred Hitchcock. So I've been talking about this for a while now. Actually did say it was going to happen last year before everything went down. Like I said, black and white. Kind of like that exposure meets HR blood and guts with like monitors pretty much showing you actual footage of Alfred Hitchcock introducing what you're going to see in the next maze room. And I think that would be what they would do. I think it's a great idea. Something Dr. Jimmy hinted about uh, a couple years ago for Halloween Horror Nights 23 in one of his uh, All Secrets Revealed videos. And we'll talk a little bit more about Dr. Jimmy as we progress. So that's another thing we have to look forward to. Another thing that everybody has uh, been talking about for the last several years, that's H.P. Lovecraft. The works of H.P. Lovecraft, um, very uh, well known in the literary community, and I think it would be a very uh, entertaining house. See a lot of the uh, puppetry we could have gotten in previous houses before we actually got into puppetry, and puppetry that we saw like in American Werewolf in London and, of course, Alien vs. Predator, which, again, I'll talk about later in this video. So, Dr. Jimmy joked about it again in one of his All Secrets Revealed videos for Halloween Horror Nights 21 as a Cthulhu Rises house, and who knows, maybe it actually might finally happen. Another thing is the 1974 Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Uh, the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre would probably be a good addition to the event, given the fact that all the saws everywhere, literally, almost everybody had a chainsaw last year. It was like the Oprah thing, like, you get a chainsaw, you get a chainsaw. Hey, let's give Cindy a chainsaw. Let's watch her try to fiddle with it. The funny thing, it was entertaining to watch, trust me. And there's nothing against the actress, but it was entertaining to watch. Especially the way she was gleefully, like, trying to get it started. Now, the thing about it is, could it be happening? Uh, obviously, the Leatherface prequel is coming out this year, and we've done Texas Chainsaw in the past for 17. Uh, that was based on the remake. This is based on the original, so I think that would be an interesting house to uh, see. Obviously, Leatherface is not my favorite of the slashers, probably my least favorite of the slashers, basically because I don't like chainsaws. But then again, Horror Nights have made me a little bit numb to chainsaws, and I basically already saw Leatherface at the event, or what I imagine Leatherface would look like. Jacob Buckner in Cabin in the Woods at 23, so pretty much about the same thing except holding a chainsaw and revving a chainsaw instead of a sledgehammer. So that's that's probably the same actor, if I have to guess. Uh, Ash vs. Evil Dead. Uh, we've been talking about Versus for a long time. Obviously, we did Alien vs. Predator, did Freddy vs. Jason. I know a lot of people want to see Jack vs. Eddie. I'll talk about that in a little bit. And this is a house that I think may happen. I know Universal's had some issues with the Evil Dead brand for recently, and I don't know if that would play in anything. But... It is a successful property. It is something that I think could happen. It's got a, another season that just got announced on Stars, So it could be our television promo house. could be our From Dust Till Dawn this year. You never know. Obviously, when I'm talking about television promo, that's a segue, and that means the return of The Walking Dead. Now, I didn't think that Walking Dead and American Horror Story could coexist at the event, but maybe things got worked out. Maybe we crossed the T's and dotted the lowercase J's at the right time frame, and we realized this could be the fifth and final appearance of The Walking Dead at Halloween Horror Nights in Orlando. And I think that may be the case. Now, there has been rumors about this fictitious contract that's been signed about multi-years for The Walking Dead. You never know if this has actually been true or not. Maybe it was a five-year contract all along, and who knows what's going to happen. So, 
The last thing we talk about is The Purge, and The Purge was very successful as a scare zone at 24, and minorly successful in a house last year, a very intense house last year that obviously should have been something else in more ways than one, but they did what they had with what they had, so basically they had to move on to try The Purge not exactly like they wanted to. I have a feeling they were probably headed towards doing it this year, and I will get to that in a little bit. Now, the movie is slated out for July 1st, and I think that'd be a great announcement that we could be seeing, but we'll talk about that later on. So, other things. Are icons returning? You almost think that Jack and Chance are coming back, given their response from last year, given the fact that, obviously, people still want to see Jack, people that are new to the event want to see Jack, people that are obviously have been fans of the event since the inception of the event, probably don't necessarily want to see Jack. But then again, Jack sells, so it's just like The Walking Dead. Jack sells, or Jack merchandise sells, obviously. I'm wearing a t-shirt, and I have stuff right behind me. So, I don't know if you can see anything here. You can't because I'm covering it up, but my, uh, and my cup, see? Yeah, there it is. See this cup behind me? And the, uh, vinyl. There's a couple of things right behind me. So, yeah, Probably could barely see that, but that's another story for another time. Uh, what about the Usher? The Usher literally said on the final night last year, November 2nd, that see you at 26. So could it be? Like when he did his final Usher kill, he actually wrote in blood, see you at 26. So are we going to see the Usher come back this year? Or was just the actor having a little fun with everyone? Uh, it remains to be seen. Maybe we're going to go in an original direction. Now, obviously, the original direction that I've been talking about for a while now is to bring back the caretaker. But technically, if you want to get technical here, the next icon would have been Eddie. Yeah, obviously, his year 2001 have had to be switched because of the unfortunate events of 9-11. So because of that, Eddie had to be pushed to the back. Maybe this is his time to be pushed forward. Now, the thing is, a lot of people have been talking about Eddie coming back to the event. But I don't know at this point. It's anyone's guess if we're going to see it. But if you want to do Eddie, and if you're really that intent on seeing Jack versus Eddie, like choose your side, like Jack takes studios, Eddie takes Iowa, or if you want to do that, you want to do that that big house of the Carnage Warehouse where they meet in the middle, or if you want to have like the stage show, if you want to do any of that, they got the Entertainment Designers Forum coming up, and... Obviously, uh, Jack the Clown himself and Chance the Clown herself, obviously, James Keaton and Aaron Nicole Klein are going to be signing autographs. They're going to be there for charity, obviously, and uh, you can get your chance to uh, get your Jack and Chance merchandise signed. Well, what if we took a page out of Wes Craven's new nightmare, and while they're signing autographs and meeting everyone, all of a sudden you heard a chainsaw rev, and here comes Eddie stepping in, and Eddie basically starts cutting a promo. It's like, Jack, I want you. I want you. It's like basically cutting a promo on him and saying, you know what, I'll see you in September. And like, obviously James is like, dude, it's like, I'm just, it's just a character. Kayfabe, it's just a character. I mean, come on, I'm James. I mean, uh, like, seriously, I you see you watch too many horror movies. Like, come on. It's like cosplay has gone to way, way too far. And then like he revs his chainsaw and he's like an insistent. He's going to see them. And all of a sudden it's kind of like he's threatening, he's threatening the character of Jack the Clown in his mind, but obviously he's threatening the real person. So I think it'd be something really interesting to do for the entertainment designers forum. I don't know if they would get away with doing something like that. It'd be something I'd love to hear about because it makes perfect sense to me. If they really want to go all in with the uh, Jack versus Eddie thing, I think it makes sense to the character. Especially the fact that the original character, Edgar Sawyer, uh, was uh, obsessed with horror films. So that would have been a tie-in to the 2001 version of Eddie that we never got to really see. But that's another story for a different time. Now, obviously, we have The Caretaker would be the direction I would go this year, a death-themed year. We'd have The Director next year, a lot of really heavy-duty IPs. The Storyteller, and then that would bring in a lot of literary works. That's where Beaver Lovecraft would come in. I think probably another Scary Tales house. And probably where you get Bayou of Blood finally become a house instead of just a scare zone. I think that's a guarantee we're getting that as our first ever voodoo-themed house in Orlando. And then, of course, you move on to The Usher, more IPs, and then finally for 30, The Return of the Terror Queen and Terra Quintus. And I think that would be a great way to bring in new icon for 31. But who knows what's going to happen with that? Could we see a new icon, potentially, like the Puppet Master from Singapore, maybe? You could be seeing a brand new icon. Crow, possibly. I think even though he's been talked about before, I don't think that he's going to have him, but you never know. It's possible. 
So, like I said, Mamba the Voodoo Queen, I think that's a great idea. Maybe an original female icon, maybe a year of female icons, like, girl power to a different extent. I think that would be interesting. It remains to be seen. So, Unknown was posting on Orlando Informer forums, and he has been doing so for a while, and he actually has a Twitter now. If you want to check out his musings, uh, you can check him out on Twitter. So, the thing is, Unknown is hinting about two things. He says, number three, miss me, which allows me to believe it's going to be The Conjuring, which I think is pretty much a guarantee at this point. And then again, I'm starting to believe that there's a possibility The Conjuring could end up being Insidious, which I'm thinking that means we're getting it a year later, where it doesn't mean as much as it could have before, because Hollywood just got it by itself. But I think that it's going to be a share. I just think that in the back of my mind, I'm still worried that it's going to end up being the Insidious of this year, not replaced by Insidious or another year for Insidious. I mean, literally, it's going to go to Hollywood first, and we may not get it until next year. But we'll, we'll see where it goes from there. And obviously, that's hitting on the fact that it's the third movie, because technically Annabelle is the second, even though it's a prequel. And the other one is a picture of a cockroach. Obviously, cockroaches just won't go away, and that's a little haha -ha for uh, The Walking Dead coming back. And I will say the shout out for The Conjuring is another member of the Popcast Network, and that's Jeremy Films uh, with two Z's. He's uh, came up with that idea for The Conjuring, and I think it makes perfect sense. <clears throat> Let's talk about some other ideas real quick. Returning. Originals like H.R. Blood and Guts, Travis mentioned that as well. I know Drew from Orlando United really wants to see that happen. Catacombs or Cats and Combs, obviously we want to see that happen. Another Nightingale's House based upon World War II, maybe leave it to Cleaver coming back. I want to, I personally want to see another Jack Compilation House. You could have those till the end of time, I wouldn't care because it would help me with uh, my history of the event. IPs I love to see, obviously, I've been talking about it for a while. Jeremy mentioned it on his video, and that is They Live in 3D. I think it's perfect. I think it makes a lot of sense, and with the unfortunate death of Rowdy Roddy Piper last year, I think it's the perfect time to do this property. House of a Thousand Corpses, I think, is a, almost a, a certainty for the next couple of years. I think Rob Zombie does come to the event, and I think that uh, Hollywood can end up getting 31 based on that. It just kind of depends. Drew was talking a lot about Sinister as well, and I think it fits an all-night die-in or Silver Screams a little bit more as a compilation house, more than a house by itself, but I do see the reason why they would allow that. And don't forget that Boogeyman song that was in the trailer for Sinister 2 was definitely played in Shady Brook last year, so you never know. Hints are everywhere. Trick or Treat, maybe it's finally coming. Uh, maybe it's at Michael uh, Doherty, a double feature. That could possibly happen. Uh, Gremlins, I know that's... A lot for puppetry. Ghostbusters would be amazing if I got to see it. Jeremy brought up bringing back Alien vs. Predator or maybe an alien house to utilize that extremely, very expensive. Sorry, I want to do a Bud Dink reference right there. So yeah, shout out if you got that. And <laughs> that would allow for Hollywood's very expensive Evil Queen to be used one more time before it got put into uh, storage, if you will. And maybe that's an also a shout-out saying that we got American Werewolf in London, which is from 23, and that was during 25. Maybe 26 will give us something back from 24, which would allow me to believe that Alien vs. Predator could happen, but not if Ash vs. Evil Dead does. And maybe the return of Michael Myers, which I have happening for 27 instead. But that's another story for a different time. So, as we end this video... I have one more thing to discuss, and that is Dr. Jimmy, the incomparable Dr. Jimmy, and the fact that he said last year he was not doing any more cryptic clues, no more cryptic videos, not, no more singing, no more statements, no more anything. He was done, but he was still going to make videos. But the interesting thing is, he's not being cryptic anymore. He's just singing songs. I wonder... Speaking of wonder, the first thing he performed was Fleetwood Mac's Seven Wonders. Hmm... Could the good doctor be hinting at something finally coming to the event? Maybe there's only seven houses. Nah, there's no way. Too much backlash. Seven scare zones? A little bit more likely. I don't know. Unsure. You know, there could be a supreme being coming to the event. I don't know. This, this all fills me up with glee. Now, the second video came out with the Amboy Dukes doing A Journey to the Center of the Mind. Kind of groovy to me in a far out way written in the stars if you will you know maybe something else could be coming to halloween horror nights you never know we'll see thirdly 
White Daisy Passing by Voto Lotto. You know what? Doc, I love the way you crafted that one. And uh, right before I filmed this, I saw the fourth one. And who knows, there's probably going to be more. A very patriotic performance of America the Beautiful. Blessed be, it is an election year after all. Any of this going to happen? Any of it coming to fruition? Yeah, who knows? Only time will tell. So uh, that is the video for today. And uh, real quick before we uh, get out here, I want to let you guys and girls out know if you want to follow me on Twitter, it's at Sarone Disney. You can follow Pop and the Popcast Network on Twitter at, at Popcast Network and like our Facebook fan page under Sir Owen Disney Pop or search for Sir Owen Disney and Pop. Follow Halloween Horror Nights Orlando on Twitter at, at Horror Nights ORL. And if you want to purchase that ticket package I spoke about, including Halloween Horror Nights tickets, park tickets, and Sapphire Falls Resort, you can check out HalloweenHorrorNights.com backslash Orlando backslash vacation dash package dot HTML. Check out amazing Halloween Horror Nights forums located at Horror Night Nightmares, Orlando United, Orlando Informer, and... Also, some great Halloween Horror Nights related sites like HomemadeHaunt.net, FirstClassHorror.com, HHNCrypt.com, HHNLegacy.com, HHNYearbook.com, HHNOfficial.com, and my good friends Matt and Quint of NeoZaz.com with their Catacombs of Halloween Horror Nights podcast, which is located at NeoZaz.com backslash category backslash podcast backslash Halloween dash horror dash nights backslash. You can check out the Popcast Network's Halloween Horror Nights panel. Uh, my good friends Tyler and Andrew at Homemade Haunt. Uh, my good friend Cameron at Cryptic Cam. My good friend Ian at Theme Park Browse. My good friend Travis at Travis Coaster. My good friend Aaron at Mr. Entertainment 92. And my other good friend Aaron at spelled differently, at First Class Horror. You can also check out some really solid Halloween Horror Nights updaters like the literal Halloween Horror Nights updaters. John, Vic, Neil, Aaron, David, Tristan, James, as well as... Oh, uh, oh sorry. James and Tristan, of course. Also, big shout-out to James, HHN Updated 1, as well as Matt, HHN Trogdor, Jeremy, Jeremy Films with two Zs, uh, Chris, HHN Legacy, and Mr. HHN at Thrill Seeker Network. If you want to check out Horror Nights Updaters, it's Horror Nights Updaters, Psycho Massacre Films, Dr. Emmett Brown 1, UK HHN, The Red Steel TV, and Crazy Englishman, and HHN Fan 16. Some other great YouTubers with Halloween Horror Nights related content, The Incomparable Dr. Jimmy, it's Docimo, D-O-C-K-I-M-O. Also, Tim and Jen, uh, The Tim Tracker, as well as Kyle from View from the Cheap Seats, Liz from Disco Lizita, Mark, the man in the Mala Vest, Z Keeper 83, uh, Zombie Chris, as well as the newest member of the Popcaster panel. Uh, link is super long and it's in the description bar. And a really great character from last year and run, Andrew. So all that information is in the bottom here for description. In the meantime, I want to thank you guys and girls out there for watching. And until tomorrow, boys and girls, that's all I got to say about that. <laughs>